And I'm so excited to share that with you guys. That is such an answered prayer because I was so desperate <laughs> to talk to this person that it didn't matter. My, my needs didn't matter. If you have to remind them that you exist, they are not the one for you. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Walk Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I post all things faith, lifestyle, travel vlogs. This channel is essentially a video diary of my life. I've been making these podcast episodes for about 10 months or so now, if you're new. And I just, I have gone through a year, year and a half of just such transition. I've learned so much. My faith has grown so much. And I have felt how amazing it feels and so I just have so much to share because I want everybody to feel what I have felt in the last year. So that's essentially what this podcast is. I always encourage you guys to remember that this is never my intention to preach at you or come across as holier than thou ever. It's more of like preaching back and forth. I'm preaching to myself as well and even I don't even like the word preaching because you know what I'm not a preacher. Sometimes I check myself a little bit and I'm like Sam relax a little bit but I just have so much to to share with you guys and so I will be here sharing for as long as you want to listen um but yeah we're up to episode 16 16 is my favorite number uh so I'm hoping that means that this is gonna be um, a really good episode I'm excited for it and this one isn't as like quote-unquote preachy um I don't really have scriptures for you at all. Like it's not that kind of message. We're actually going to be talking about dating and identity and rejection and all those things. It's really on my heart to talk about those things and I've wanted to for a while, but now I feel like I'm at a good headspace where I can really talk about it more in depth. So it's going to be more like big sister, you know, best friend kind of vibes that we're going to we're going to talk like that in this episode. So I'm excited for it. But before we get into it, Oh, I have some things to share with you and I'm really excited. So first order of business. Remember when I sat here a couple episodes ago and I said, we're not on Spotify yet, but mark my words, one day it will be. Well, guys, here we are. The podcast is officially on Spotify and I'm so excited. I just, I felt like it was time and I really sat down and I worked really hard to get all the episodes ready and converted into the right format and to put it all out there for you guys. So it is uh, now we're available for video streaming here on YouTube or just audio only on Spotify. Um, and I'm so excited to share that with you guys. That is such an answered prayer and I'm so excited about it. Um, and so a couple things, I will have the link to my podcast down below um, in the description box if you want to check that out, or you can just search The Walk Podcast on Spotify and it will pop up. It would really, really mean a lot to me if you guys could follow the podcast on there because it's going to boost the podcast up and more people can see it. Um, and I would also really appreciate if you wouldn't mind to rate the podcast. Now, I'm not going to tell you, give it five stars, although I would love it if you did. That would really, that would mean a lot to your girl, but I'm not going to say that. But I would really appreciate any rating of any kind on there because all of that is going to boost the podcast up. And again, like I said, I just have so much that I want to say that I want to share with as many people as I can. And so doing those things is really going to bump it up for more people to see. So if you are a follower of, of my channels, if you're a follower of the podcast, I would really, really appreciate you guys to go show Spotify some love. Even if you are going to prefer to just watch on YouTube, that's totally fine. But I would really appreciate it. It's free to do and it only takes a couple seconds. I think Spotify, you do have to listen a little bit before you are able to rate it. But Regardless, that support would really, really mean a lot to me. And so I'm so excited to share that to you. So now I have to be kind of mindful that this is not just video only. Now some people may be listening just audio and they may not be able to see everything that I'm doing. Um, and it's really cool. I get messages from people that are like, oh, I listen to the podcast in the car. I listen to it while I'm on my walk. And hopefully this will make it easier for you to do that. You won't have like ads in the middle and you can just put it you know on your phone lock your phone and put your phone in your pocket and just listen so hopefully that will make it easier for you guys so i'm so excited so every time a, an episode drops here on youtube it's also going to drop on spotify so 
so excited for that. And again, thank you in advance for your support. So excited for that. The second thing, remember when (laughs) I sat here, I think it was even the last episode or maybe two episodes ago where I said, God really put the words, let them see you on my heart. And I discovered that it was about letting people in my life see, you know, my podcast episodes and my just YouTube videos in general that I've been doing for so long. Um, Just not to be as shy about it anymore, to be proud of it, because why do something if you're not proud of it, right? So that was my thing. Let them see you. And I felt led, I shared this with you, I felt led to go and start posting clips of the podcast on TikTok. So I started doing that as like a promotional thing and I and I was really I am really proud of it and I was sharing it. I was even sharing it on my personal TikTok. I like reposted one. And one morning, I think it was like two weeks ago, I was praying as I did every morning or as I do every morning. And I was like, God, I really hope and I pray that you continue to help me show people this side of me and, and let them really see me, you know, open doors, open doors for people to really see me. <laughs> that same day I'm at work and I again I had been posting the TikTok so I wasn't like surprised I knew it was going to happen um but it happened that day I was sitting at work and I get a TikTok DM and I open it and it's from my coworker now this is on my personal TikTok but it's from my coworker and he sent me <laughs> one of my clips from my podcast channel to my personal and he was of course very he was very supportive about it you know he was like Sam this is like this is this is fire with a bunch of like fire emojis and while I look back and I'm like oh that's really cool but in the moment I did one of these ready if you're watching on YouTube I did one of these I read it and I went and just immediately put my phone down and I did one of those and if you you know who you are you co-worker if you're watching this this is this is what happened in the moment and I really had to I had to take a second and I was like Sam you prayed for this this is what you wanted this is what God told you to do I was texting my friend Kathy and I was like I need you to check me because God is telling me to do this but I'm scared and I want to hide and she was like nope she was like this is what God told you to do so you're gonna go with it and you're gonna oh you're gonna obey and you're gonna be okay with it and I said okay that's fine so I was okay. And then I became really at peace with it. And this coworker is a Christian of mine, a Christian of mine. That's weird. He is a Christian, as am I, and, you know, was very supportive of it. So like, I was like, thank you, Lord, that the first person that found it is someone who is like in agreement with this. Like, this is cool. Um, you know, and so he and I have, have kind of talked about it a little bit, but not really yet. Um, but that was the beginning. And then that same night, another coworker followed my TikTok podcast um channel or page or whatever and I was like okay okay I was like yep this is what we prayed for this is what we were believing for I was like you're okay I was like literally trying to check myself I was like Sam you're okay you're fine this is what's supposed to happen now I'm at I'm at such peace with it it's actually very exciting to me um and it's it's answered prayers I believe this is what's this is what's supposed to happen and it's just it's a little, um, it's not that I'm embarrassed. It's just that the feeling of feeling vulnerable is a scary feeling. I'm sure many of you have felt it. And so my first instinct is just to panic, but I'm getting better with it. I'm getting much better. We're making strides and I pray about it every day that God would make me bold and unashamed and you know, all the things. Um, but that happened. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So if any of you co-workers, friends who may have not watched this before, but maybe you're watching or listening now. Um, hello. I'm really glad you're here. And when you see me in person, if you have any questions, let's talk about it. Um, so that's that. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because I don't know what, I don't fully know what God's doing with this podcast, but I truly feel in my heart that something is happening, that this is all happening the way it's supposed to. And full transparency, when I posted episode 15, the last episode, I think in my opinion, that episode was very bold in comparison to my other ones where it just like, I was very like, cert- like, I don't know how to explain it. It just felt bold. Like I was more like, you know, this feels wrong to do it this way. This is the right way to do it. Like it was more, it was more bold. I was more confident in it. 
which is great. But I had severe, like, what is it? What's, what is it when you're, um, imposter syndrome, like something like that, where I was just, I had a moment of real anxiety that night, the same night I posted it where I was really anxious. And these thoughts were in my head of like, Sam, who do you think you are? Like, why do you feel like people should listen to you? Like, why does what you say matter? Truly, those were the thoughts that were going through my head. And I think, you know, the enemy uses that stuff. We're not going to get into that now. That's like a whole sermon. But I really think that when something big is about to happen and like big things are happening, not to say that this this podcast is going to go viral and that that's not what I'm saying, but I really do believe that this podcast is touching people and it's changing lives. And I don't say that for my glory. I say it for his. And when things are happening or about to happen, that's when self-doubt comes in. That's when insecurity comes in and it tries to prevent you from going the way you're supposed to. So I was really fighting. I was fighting those feelings head on. And I was like, nope, that's from, you know, not today, Satan, literally. We're, you know, we're not, we're not inviting that in. We're not letting that in. And even now, like as I was getting ready, um, and I'm rambling a lot, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes, I promise. But when I was getting ready to sit down and film this, I'm not going to lie, my heart was beating really fast and I felt really anxious. It, it was like something was preventing me from like, or trying to prevent me from sitting down and continuing to make these episodes. And we're fighting that. We're fighting it. And now that I'm here and I'm talking to you and I'm in front of the camera, I feel good. And I'm excited to talk about what we're going to talk about. So anyway, that's all my 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 housekeeping stuff. Um, yeah, it's come. It's the the prayer is being answered of let them see you now. And now I like feel in my mind. I'm like I want to like I want to tell people like all my old church friends from from my old church. You know, I want to tell them they don't know. And I even I shared it with my my church friends now at my new church, and they were very supportive about it. And just you know, I don't know. Good things are happening. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today is I want to talk about identity and uh, more specifically, I want to talk about identity within a relationship um, and how not to lose your own identity in a relationship. I also want to talk about feelings of rejection. I want to talk about, you know, the feeling of like having to chase somebody. We're going to get into all that. But we're going to start with identity and identity in a relationship. And a lot of what I'm going to say, I'm sure that some of you are going to be like, duh, like that all goes without saying. But you would be surprised that some people, I was one of them, it's very hard for them to um, keep their own identity when they enter into a relationship to be their own person to stay their own person to acknowledge yes I'm in a relationship but we are two separate people with two separate friend groups maybe or two sets of interests or two different hobbies or whatever we are two separate people and I'm not even talking about marriage I feel like marriage is different I'm obviously not married so I don't feel qualified to speak on that really but I mean like in a relationship like dating boyfriend girlfriend because in my experience, I was not very good at that. And I didn't even realize it until the relationship was over. Um, so we're going to we're gonna get into that. We're going to talk about that. So if you are maybe, you know, very emotionally <laughs> and mentally mature and you're like, duh, Sam, yes, I know I'm my own person. I honestly, I'm very proud of you. Um, I'm going to talk to the people who that may not be so easy for you. So, you know, you know me. I have some notes. Again, I don't have like scriptures or anything like that today, but I do have some notes to kind of keep me on track. Anyway, so I think, and I can only really speak in my experience, but in my experience, I realized that in moments or in relationships where I felt this way, where I was starting to lose my, my own identity, my own self, what I was feeling more than love was infatuation. And infatuation can become really dangerous because infatuation is not love. Love, in my opinion, and from everything that I'm learning, love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. It's a choice to put somebody, somebody's needs above your own, somebody's desires above your own. It's to lay down. It's. I'm, I said I had no scriptures for you, but okay. I don't know what the actual scripture is, but in the Bible, it explains that love is putting is laying one's life down for another. It doesn't even have to be romantically. Um, that is what love is. It's a choice. It's a choice to show that love when you don't feel like it. 
Infatuation is different. Infatuation is led by lust. It's led by desire. It's led by sometimes, honestly, insecurity where you feel like maybe like they're so out of my league, but they're showing me a little bit of attention. So I'm going to chase them and I'm going to pursue them. And, 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 and pursuing is not always bad. And we're going to pursuing is not bad at all. Actually, we're going to get into that. But when it becomes infatuation and you're just like transfixed by this person and they're all you think about and they're all you want and you put them above your needs and your wants, that's when it becomes dangerous. And I felt that way um, in the past where this, like uh, one person, for example, was like my end all be all, like thought about them all the time. They called no matter what time of day I would be answering. There were times where I was sleeping and I got a call and I would wake up in the middle of the night and be like awake and present and be like, yep, yeah, I'm ready to talk because you want to talk to me now. It's putting, it's, it's an unhealthy way of putting somebody else before your needs. Because like I said, love is putting someone's needs before your own, but that's healthy. Infatuation is not healthy. And anyway, it got to a point where I was so infatuated that I was putting the idea, I wasn't even in a relationship yet, but I was putting the idea of a relationship with this person above everything else. For example, before we were even dating, around a time, around that time, I was working really early morning shifts. Like I'm talking like I had to be there 3, 4, 5 a.m. So you would think I'd go to bed at like 8 p.m., which I wasn't. But anyway, I was young and dumb and I thought that I could survive on three hours of sleep. Regardless, there were times where I'd be laying down, getting ready to go to sleep to try to get my four or five hours of sleep. And this person that I was so infatuated with would call me at midnight, sometimes 1 a.m. Your girl would answer because I was so desperate <laughs> to talk to this person that it didn't matter. My, my needs didn't matter. It didn't matter that I needed to, to get up to go to work. Okay, some of you are probably listening to this right now and you're probably like, well, that's stupid. Yes, you, you would be correct. But I know I'm not the only one that has done this. Maybe some of you can relate. So that's the kind of infatuation that is just unhealthy and you don't even realize that it's hurting you in the process. You don't realize that you're hurting yourself in the process by not putting yourself first in that scenario. And you're not, by doing that, you're not loving yourself well either, which, you know, I've been a big proponent of that this past year of just like self-love and learning how to put yourself first. And you're not doing that when you're putting stupid things like that above your needs. Um, and I read a book by uh, Madison Pruitt Trout. And I think I've talked about it before. Um, it's called The Love That Everybody Wants. And there's a quote in that book that she, I think I wrote it somewhere. Um, yeah, she said, when you make someone your everything, you lose everything else. And that's very true. It's very true. I like, I circled it and underlined it in the book because when I was reading it, I was like, wow, I can so relate to that. And I wrote, I wrote it down in my notes here because I wanted to share it. So I think it's important to make someone that you're interested in or someone you're in a relationship, it is important to make them important, but you cannot make them your end all, be all. And that's what I was guilty of. So I wanted to talk about some tips on how going forward, like as I have been dating and in my next relationship, whenever that comes, tips that I'm going to use, I think I only have like three of them, that I'm going to use to help me not lose my identity ever again. There is a Kelsey Ballerini song that um, was in her Rolling Up the Welcome Mat EP, I think it was called, and that came out around the time of my breakup, and girl, I was singing that that song in the car at the top of my lungs. It's, 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 I love her. She's a country artist, and I just, I love her, um, and that album really got me through, and there's one song that says, I hope I learned to love me like I loved you then, and I hope I never leave me again. And I was like, ooh, that like really like sucker punched me in the gut because I have been there where you love somebody so much that you're abandoning yourself. And so here are some tips that I'm going to try to implement. Not that I'm going to try to implement, that I'm going to implement moving forward and that I have been implementing. So um, first one is to kind of keep your own routine um, so by that, I mean, really identify the things that you do in your everyday life that are, that have value for you. For, for example, getting my workout in 
every day. I value that. It makes me feel good physically and mentally. And my Bible study and my prayer time, my quiet time in the mornings, that is very important to me. And it's so easy for me to do that now because I have my own place and I can do that whenever I want. Um, so identifying those things that you value and then when another when that person comes along you're not sacrificing those values I used to be so guilty of like I would have plans or something that I wanted to do or like I said have to go to bed early for work and then I would get a call or a text being like hey let's hang out and I would drop everything I, I mean everything I would drop everything to go hang out with that person Again, not loving myself well, not keeping my routine, not doing the things that I value that make me happy, that make me feel good because you're chasing that infatuation. So maintaining your identity number or step number one, identifying what you're passionate about, what you find value in and not sacrificing those things just because somebody cute comes along. Um, It doesn't mean you can't be flexible. Okay, please don't understand me. Being flexible is important in any relationship, whether it's friends, family, or a romantic relationship. It's That's very important, I think. Yes, be flexible. What I'm saying to not do is to just literally drop everything because a relationship is coming or is here or somebody cute hits you up and is like, hey, let's link up. I hate when people say that. I don't know if people say that like where you live. People say that here. Let's link up. It drives me crazy. Anyway, that's a side note. Um, So that's number one. Next time a guy or a girl calls you, it's like, hey, let's hang out. Don't drop everything. Do what you got to do first. Take care of yourself first. And then they'll be there after you're done. And if they're not, then maybe that's not the person for you. Okay, so that's tip number one. Step number two is prioritizing your family relationships and your friendships oh I was so bad at this and if any of my family members are watching they're probably like yeah you were I took my friendships and my family relation my familial relationships for granted for a long time I'm not proud of it I regret it um you know I was just the type where I would drop everything for this relationship um or for a relationship or to hang out with a guy or whatever Um, you know, I think it's important to include your significant other in your plans with your friends or your family. And I think it's equally as important to have your time with your family and your friends without your significant other there. I was really guilty of that. It got to a point, and there's a lot more that goes into this that I found out about later, but it got to a point where I was in a relationship where when we were doing separate things, I would get so anxious. That's like anxious attachment. That is not healthy and if I could go back and tell myself hey this is a red flag that you maybe want to address within yourself and within your relationship I would now again there are a lot of feelings and things that went into those insecurities that I was feeling and now I know where they came from that's a different story but it got to a point where if we were doing separate things with separate with separate friends I'll never forget there was one day where like I almost cried and that was towards the end of the relationship so that makes sense Um, because it was just very unhealthy, but that is not healthy. So yes, include your your significant others in your friends' plans, bring them around your family. That's important. You want them to have a relationship with the people in your life, but it is equally as healthy to do your own thing and just be, I wish like I could just go back and like shake myself and be like, you are two separate people. And especially if you're not married. And I don't know like if anybody can relate to this, but when you're in a relationship and you're so sure, like I'm gonna marry this person. Like this is my future husband. This is my future wife. So I might as well just act like we're married now. No, look at me or listen to me if you're not looking at me. No, if there is no ring on your finger, you are two separate people. You are not one until you are married in my opinion, point blank period. I'll never forget after, do I want to share this? Yeah, I'll share it. After my last relationship, I'll never forget. I was talking to somebody who I've known for a very, very long time. It was almost like a mentor figure of mine. And we were talking about, you know, a relationship that I was in and things that were happening that towards the end. 
and she asked about it and I told her the truth and then I said but you know I was just trying to work through it because I was so sure that this was going to be my husband that I was like you know he's my future husband no matter what it is we're going to be able to work through it and she said to me point blank we were on the phone she said to me Sam no she said unless there is a ring on your finger you do not put up with that behavior and she said, even when you have a ring on your finger, within reason, if it's really like an abusive situation, you do not, you do not put up with that. You are two separate people still. You, there, you have no claim on him. He has no claim on you. You are not one in God's eyes. You are not one by law. You are not one. If you do not have a ring on your finger, you do not put up with behavior like that. And I will never forget it. I will never forget that conversation because that was, that was my mentality to the point where I was putting up with behavior that, and again, I always say this, I will never sit here and say that I was perfect because I was not, but I was putting up with behavior that was so much less than I deserved that I was sitting there begging somebody not to leave me just because in my mind I was like, yeah, but I'm going to marry this person. So like, I have to start acting like a, like a wife now. It, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you what my mentality was because even that, I just said that doesn't even make sense. But that, that was my thought process. And in a way, like it does show me how deeply I can love and how unconditionally I can love, which I think is great. But it's just, it's again, it's maintaining your identity. You are two separate people. Um, so anyway, I, you, basically what I'm saying is don't have that mentality of where you have a picture in, in your future or a picture in your mind of your future and then you become lenient on behavior that you don't deserve. I think that's what I was trying to say. So we'll put a little, we'll put a little bow on that. And then the last um, little like tip I have for maintaining your identity in a relationship is keeping your passions, right? So what is your like passion and your, and your purpose? I could speak to me, for example, obviously I don't have to tell you guys, this podcast is a passion project of mine. YouTube is a, pro is a passion of mine, just content creation in general, whether it's TikTok. I mean, I make no money on TikTok, but TikTok actually brings me joy. I feel like it's a creative outlet for me. And it's just, it's just fun for me. And it's become, it's becoming a passion of mine. YouTube has been a passion of mine for almost a decade, um, this podcast. And so identify your passions and the right person will not pull you away from those things. They will actually encourage you to, Hey, go do your, yeah, go do your own thing. Go film a YouTube video, go film your podcast episode, go, you know, do your things. If you're, I don't know, whatever you're into, if you're into music, if you're into art, whatever your your person should push you to to what's the word help me pursue is that the word i'm looking for they will push you to pursue those those passions um and i i i truly think that n all of us on this earth we none of us are an accident none of us were born by accident i think we all have a purpose i truly truly believe that and i my prayer for you and my hope for you is that you find it one day if you haven't found it yet uh, and when you have found it lean into it and run full speed ahead and really just give it all you got um, but I think a person will either pull you away from your passions or will push you closer it's one of the two and I remember for me, in my last relationship, for sure, YouTube took a big step back. I was still posting every every week, twice a week. Like, I never stopped that. But I, I, I my passion dwindled because my relationship became my end-all, be-all, forefront of my mind at all times. That I was putting effort into YouTube, but, like, barely. I feel like the right person will really motivate you to make your passion grow even stronger and really lean into those passions and encourage you. Um, so that's a big one. And that, that kind of goes with the first tip of like finding things that you value and not letting somebody else like trump that, you know what I mean? Um, so I guess those two kind of go in hands, but keeping your passion um, and really just remembering, and I've talked about this, so I'm not going to talk about it like too much, but it's really just so important to remember that another person cannot complete you. They can't because they will fail you at some point. We're all human. We're all flawed. We're going to hurt our partners. 
we're going to we're just we're going to disappoint people another person can't complete you because your identity has to come i've talked about it so much and i don't want to like bore you so i'm not going to go into it but they can't complete you because what happens if you're leaning on them to be whole right and then they fail you or they hurt your feelings or they cheat on you or whatever and then you're left with nothing so i've preached that to you many times but i'm just so passionate about it you know you can't you can only be complete by one person and that's my guy upstairs according to me and what i have learned and um what i have experienced firsthand really um I have leaned on someone to complete me. That didn't work. I have leaned on God to complete me. And it's just the difference is just night and day. It's night and day. It really is. And now with that, I I want to lean into now this like infatuation thing of just like, you are so infatuated that this person just is all consuming your mind and you just want to pursue them and you want to chase them. I, I chased somebody for years, the same person, like for years to the point where it's like kind of embarrassing um but you just if you've ever felt it this that infatuation sometimes it's just really really hard to break it um and so sometimes having so much infatuation and chasing somebody with all you got will sometimes end up in feelings of rejection i chased somebody for a long time and i got a no multiple times Um, that was actually the person I ended up dating. But for years, I chased and I got no's a couple times. And you would think after the first no, you'd be like, okay, you move on. I don't know, maybe my frontal lobe and my brain wasn't developed yet enough for me to be like, okay, yeah, let's move on. Anyway, that's a different conversation for another day. But what I do want to say is, firstly, I actually, I don't believe in rejection. I don't think it's a thing. I believe in redirection and I've talked about this before when something doesn't work out whether it's a job you don't get that job or somebody doesn't want to date you or somebody breaks up with you or whatever it is that's not it's not rejection please don't think of it like that it's redirection so if if something doesn't work out that just means that it wasn't for you and you get so much peace when you think about things that way if something doesn't work out it simply just wasn't for you you have something better if that job didn't work out there's a better one that's more suited for you on the way that person didn't want to date you they're not your person because the right person would never put themselves in a position to lose you that's a whole other discussion that we can maybe talk about another time but it's true let me say it again the right person will not put themselves in a position to lose you ever because they see you as too valuable okay and that should go both ways you should you should um respond with that same energy back to your person um but it's that simple if something passes you it's it wasn't for you i truly believe that if it's for you nobody can take it away from you and if it's not from you you have absolutely no power strong enough to be able to keep it so once you develop that, that mentality, everything is so much easier and life becomes so much more peaceful because that sting of rejection won't be there. I always tell my friends, like, if somebody doesn't want to date them or they get ghosted or stood up on a date or whatever, I always tell them the same thing. See this as a blessing because see it as this person is now out of the way. They're eliminated. They're out of the way and now there's room for the right thing, the right person, the right job to come in. Because if it's if it's not for you, why would you want it? It's just going to waste your time. So be happy that it's out of the way and focus on the fact that now there's room for something better to come in. I'm telling you, once you really adapt that mentality and you like meditate on that and really meditate and put it in your heart the peace that you feel is like out of this world. It is, it is night and day. Um, so anyway, that was a kind of a little bit of a tangent, but this, this feeling, I just keep coming back to this feeling of like infatuation. It leads to chasing. And I want to talk to, to, to maybe younger people, but honestly, people my age and even older could probably go through this too. I have learned 
that when it comes to like needing to get somebody's attention like if we if you want to post like a cute selfie or like a what do people still call them thirst traps I don't know you post these things to get the person that you have feelings for that you have a crush on or whatever to to pay attention to you I want to say this really clearly ready and I hope that out of if you get anything out of this episode I pray that these words stay with you ready if you have to remind them that you exist they are not the one for you I'm gonna say it one more time if you have to remind this person that you exist they are not for you. The right person will pursue you. The right person will lead with clarity, will not have you second guessing, will not make you feel like an option. They're going to make you feel like a priority. And this is, can you tell I'm like really passionate about this topic because I have been through it and I have learned and I want to do a whole episode on this, I think, and just like dating in general and like dating as a Christian in 2024 because it's really hard and it's really different and I'm just very passionate about it. So maybe I'll do that because it's February. So I, you know, it's more, it's the month that's associated with like dating and love. So maybe I can make it like a little series. I don't know. It's just, it's really, it's really strong on my heart. Um, oh Lord, what was I saying? Oh yeah. When you, when you have to remind somebody that you exist by posting a selfie or posting something probably dumb, and I'm saying that out of love because I have done it online for them to remember that you exist. They're not the one for you. Because what happens is when you are posting these things for this, I'm going to speak to my girls for a second just because I have been there. When you're posting something to get this guy's attention, and especially if it's a picture of like your body or whatever, please keep in mind, and I say this with love, what you catch him with is what you're going to have to keep him with. So if you're catching him with your looks with your, you know, I don't know, I don't know what you post, booty cheeks hanging out or I don't know. You know what I mean? When you're trying to like, you're trying to look all good and like look all, all, you know, whatever. What you keep him with, you are, or what you, what you reel him in with, you're going to have to keep him with. And I hate to tell you, it's true. After a year, year and a half, two years, the honeymoon phase is going to end. And even for you, the relationship isn't going to feel as exciting it should always feel a little exciting. You sh- I, I'm a firm believer that you should never stop dating, even if you've been married 50 years. But still, it's true that the relationship, the excitement of it is going to eventually fade. And what happens is when what you caught him with isn't enticing to him anymore, he's going to be looking around for the next enticing thing. And then he's going to be pulled in another direction by that if he feels like he's not getting it from you anymore. And I hate to tell you this also, we're all going to age right? Parts of us are going to start to sag. If you have abs, maybe one day you're not going to have abs. You know, the the butt's not going to be as lifted. You know, all the things, our bodies are going to change. And what happens then? Because what you caught him with, you don't have anymore. So did he really like you for you? Does he love you for you? Or did you just get him with your looks? And then again, as that excitement fades, he looks the other direction and sees another thirst trap or whatever, he's going to be enticed by that. You don't want a person like that anyway. You don't want a person who you have to remind, hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm looking good today. You know, I I hope you, you hit me up. I hope you send me a snap streak. I hope you, whatever people are doing now. I don't know. Um, You don't want somebody like that. You don't want to chase somebody like that. Don't allow yourself to be infatuated with somebody like that because it's going to hurt you. I'm telling you, it's going to hurt you. And even you even want to go a step further, if you pull a guy with your looks, right? And this can go for guys too. You know, guys post gym selfies or whatever you guys post. I don't know. Um, but guys can do this too. What happens when you pull somebody with your looks and then God forbid you get sick or you have a stroke or you your body looks different? Then what? You want somebody who's really going to love you for you, who's going to pursue you for you for your heart, for your mind. And it sounds cheesy, but it's true. I'm not going to lie and say, say that physical attraction is not an important thing. Oh, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. But it shouldn't be the first thing. It should not be what starts it. I mean, if you're on an app, right, the first thing you're, you're meeting somebody with is your looks, right? 
I get that. Or when you meet somebody in person, the first thing you're going to see before you talk to them is their looks. I get that. But as you're going through the dating process and, and the pursuing process and, and, and all that, it's just, it's so important to just really let somebody see your heart and let somebody see your mind. Be very mindful of what you're pulling these people with that you're interested in because it doesn't last. The physical doesn't last. Don't chase and please, for the love of goodness, don't chase someone who doesn't deserve to be chased by you. Somebody who is treating you like an option, somebody who is doing the playing hard to get thing, is playing games, is, you know, some guys that I have personally encountered, you know, they they'll like it's almost like they tap you on the shoulder and be like hey how's it going and then they turn around and they want you to chase them the rest of the way that this is not this is not to say that pursuing somebody is bad this is not to say that women can't pursue men so i'm saying the bible does say that a man who finds a woman finds a good thing i'm not going to deny that but that's not to say that women shouldn't show that they're interested, shouldn't show, you know, um, that they're paying somebody attention, you know, shoot your shot, girl. But, you know, just make sure that it's for the right reasons and that it's for somebody that deserves it. This is like your, even if you're older than me, I still am going to call it like my big sister advice because I have done it and I have seen what happens when it doesn't go well. It strips you of your confidence. It strips you of your self-worth. It strips you of it's just, it, it, you forget what you bring to the table. It just, it does a lot of harm that takes quite a while to rebuild in some cases. So I hope that all made sense. I want to <laughs> double check my notes to make sure that there's nothing that I, that I missed. Um... I guess the only thing that I really didn't say that I have written here is the minute that if, especially if you're talking to somebody new, right. And you're in like the dating stage, the minute it starts to feel forced, I, my advice to you would be that that's probably not the relationship for you. I have been, you know, like one of the last guys I went on a couple dates with, and this was kind of a while ago, but you know, you always feel when the vibe just changes, right? Like they are all about you. They are, they're, they're texting you all the time. They're sending you pictures. They're involving you in their life. They're asking you out on dates, all the things. And then all of a sudden the vibe just changes and the vibe of the text messages change or the text messages get shorter or the, you know, the amount of days in between, you know, uh, contact gets longer the vibe just changes, that is not your sign to try harder. I believe, my opinion, that is not your sign to try harder. That is your sign to really sit with yourself and evaluate, okay, is this for me? Is this the person for me? I truly believe, and to be quite vulnerable, this is something that I haven't experienced yet, but I really do believe that something, like a relationship that is good for you, um, and maybe a relationship with someone that you're eventually going to end up marrying, that kind of relationship should be easy. And I use that word with caution because no relationship is easy. But it should, when I say easy, it should come with peace. It should come with clarity. It should not be forced. And I haven't fully experienced that yet, but I truly, and I think that's why all my relationships haven't worked out yet. But I truly believe that the right one you won't have to force you won't have to chase remember keep in mind there's a big difference between chasing and pursuing because chasing is more on the unhealthy side whereas pursuing can be very healthy is usually very healthy um so that's my kind of like big sister advice to you just remember that you are your own person remember what you bring to the table Remember your value, remember your worth, and anyone who does not make you feel that way, I truly believe is not for you.
And sometimes that's a really big pill to swallow. I have been disrespected in relationships and still didn't leave because I didn't know my worth and I just continued to put up with it. So please learn from from my mistakes when it starts to feel forced, when you have to remind somebody that you're there, that you exist, when you have to remind somebody of your beauty, when you have to remind somebody of your worth, I truly believe that there's better for you. And maybe you're in a relationship right now where some of this rings a bell. I'm sorry that I maybe made this hard for you. Maybe this was hard for you to listen to, but I really say it with love. Remember your worth. Remember what you bring to the table. Remember who you are and who you were before the relationship started. And don't let go of that person. I truly want all of that for you. So, um, I feel really... hmm, I've never ended an episode like this before, but I feel really led to uh, pray for you guys right now. Um doesn't have to be weird. Um, if you pray, if you believe, um, I just, just close your eyes with me, right? And just, and just, just listen to what I say. And, and I pray that you receive it and agree with it. You know, the Bible says that when two or more people are gathered together, even if we're not together physically, but we're kind of together right now and two or more people agree on something, it will come to pass. So, I pray that you just kind of sit with me and agree. And I'm just going to say a quick little prayer over you guys because I love you and I'm always thinking of you. So, uh, Lord God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this platform. Thank you that I have an opportunity to connect with the people on the other side of the screen. And I I might not know them personally. I might not fully know their heart, but you do. And so I pray that the things that I said in this episode really resonated with them. I pray that it touched their heart. And I pray that you continue to just sow whatever seed has been planted in their heart, Father. I leave them in your hands. I pray that you would shine your face upon them, that you would show them your mercy, your grace, and your love. That if they need peace in their life right now, Lord, that you would would fill them with that peace and that joy that surpasses all understanding, that joy that can only come from you. I pray if there's something in, in their bodies that is not working properly, Lord, if my, my friends on the other side of the screen that may be having some health issues or some mental health issues, I pray that you would lay your hands on them, Father. You are the master healer. You are, you are the master medic. You know, our doctors and our nurses are smart, but you know even more than them, Father. And your word says that by your stripes we are healed, Father. So I pray that you just work in their bodies, Lord. And that you just bring them back to health. And that it will be for your glory always. I thank you for this podcast platform. I I pray you always bless it, Father. And I thank you for this time of fellowship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you in the next episode.